Hello, my name is Gunter Eisenbach. I am the founder and CEO of Jamia Publications. And today I want to talk to you about Plan P or Transform to Open Science is Jamia Publications offering primarily for institutions, but also for funders and uh, publishers as well, as well as peer review services. Well, we want people to associate with the letter P and plan P are open science related terms like protocols, preprints, but also peer review, peer review innovations, open access publication, and new metrics for promotion and tenure. And the overarching goal here is to facilitate a transition to 100% open access. And we think that plan P is an alternative or a complementary plan to other approaches which are out there, plan S, plan U. And um, we think this is an interesting offering for institutions as well as for funders. Jamia Publications, just a couple of words about us. We are a mission-driven publisher founded over 20 years ago in 1999 with academic roots. I myself, I am a former academic. I used to be a professor in the field of health informatics. I'm actually one of the most cited health informaticians in the world. So health information is and was my passion and uh, being a publisher is kind of an extension of what I've been doing as an academic. Our focus is knowledge translation to different audiences, including patients. So that has been a hallmark of all JMA publications that we also keep in mind um, that our end users may be patients and um, open access is a natural uh, requirement for patients to be able to access research. So that's why we have been an open access publisher from the beginning. 100% of our journals are open access. We were one of the pioneers in open access and we are a co-founder of the OASPA, which is the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association. A secondary goal is really to re-engineer scholarly publishing. And that's also where Plan P fits in. We are now one of the leading open access publishers uh, in Canada, at least by volume. We're publishing over 4,200 papers a year. And we see ourselves not just as a publisher, but also as a disruptor and tech company. So at our 20th anniversary birthday in 2019, we published a special theme issue. And in this theme issue, we reflected a little bit about uh, the past and the future. So we have been disruptive and innovative in terms of open access publishing, but what's the next step? The next step in our mind is open science. And that's what we are going to focus on uh, for the next 20 years to advance open science. And again, this is where Plan P fits in. So what we announced in this uh, 20th anniversary theme issue was the creation of a new kind of journal, a journal that is also known as an overlay journal. We call this uh, a super journal, a series of super journals. Jamie X is the title of this journal or this series of journals. We have Jamie X Med, which focuses on medicine. So what's special about overlay journals is that they sit on top of preprint servers. They offer a rapid peer review model 
of uh, existing preprints. So this is very much in line with what's also known as a PRC model. First publish as a preprint, then review, and then curate in journals. So JMAX is, is one step of the curation process. So that um, journal is now one of the first, probably the first PubMed indexed uh, overlay journal in the world. And um, we want to promote preprints with this journal and also with Plan P. So um, why do we want to promote preprints? Well, there's a lot of evidence out there that immediate open access for all research output um, um, benefits science and uh, improves science. It is a form of green open access. And that had, has also led to uh, proposals like Plan U, which is a proposal brought forward by uh, Richard Sever and John Inglis and others. Um, these people are uh, managing the Med Archive and BioArchive bio preprint servers. And their argument is simply like, if everybody would publish their work as a preprint, then we would achieve 100% open access. Now, the problem with Plan U is that, first of all, it requires a mandate of preprinting, which we don't think is uh, really feasible for institutions to mandate that everything is being published as preprints. Um, but again, as you will hear, this is where Plan P uh, adds value because we are um, incentivizing researchers to publish their work as a preprint first, as opposed to man mandating. The other component that's missing in Plan U is obviously the uh, peer review component. If we publish, if researchers publish something as a preprint, um, then the question remains, is this valid research? And we have seen in the COVID pandemic that it is very useful to publish something very rapidly, but the question always remains, is this valid science? And again, this is where Plan P which has a peer review component um, adds value. Um, and the other um, the other uh, the other aspect of course of preprinting is that it increases odd metric scores and citations that has been shown. Uh, it increases accountability and transparency. It leads to quicker publication of research results and broader peer review may increase quality. So what is Plan P? So depending on the audience, um, there are a couple of ways to frame Plan P in an elevator pitch. So we refer to this as a framework and plan to achieve 100% open access uh, for an institution. And it's fully compatible with, with Plan S and Plan U. Um, it is, can also be seen as an accelerator for open science implementation. Uh, and when I talk about open science, when we talk about open science, we refer to um, open science components like preprints or also registered reports. Registered reports, of course, here the idea is that researchers first publish protocols um, to increase accountability and transparency of, of, of the work they intend to do. So all these are components of Plan P. Plan P could also be seen as a collaboration between open science friendly institutions, funders, societies, peer review services, and journals. And it is also a business model. And it is a business model that is compatible with the uh, University of California model, the shared 
cost model where part of the publication costs are carried by the institutions and another part is supported by funding agencies. So in the University of California agreement, uh, the, the, the agreement the University of California made with us, uh, first with us, but then also with other publishers, is that a thousand, about a thousand dollar, a thousand US dollar is covered by the institution and the rest is covered by the uh, grant that the researcher holds. It's also an innovation to experiment with new forms of peer reviews. And it is also a plan to reform research assessment um, to move away from the impact factor centric system. So we are also creating new metrics for research assessment metrics that, that measure, for example, adhering, adherence to best practices in open science and also AI supported scoring of, of, of the quality of reporting and research. So in the Plan P ecosystem, we have a variety of players. First of all, we want to make agreements with institutions. So that includes libraries, universities, uh, other research institutions. So these agreements are, we call them transform to open science agreements. And in these agreements, the institutions pay either a fixed fee or a fee that is dependent on their research output and what they have been publishing with the Chamber publications in the past. Um, then in the future, we will make more agreements also with funding agencies so that the other component can be built directly to the funder possibly. But for the time being, we are focusing on selling this to institutions. Other players include preprint servers. So we are collaborating with preprint servers. Uh, we have our own preprint server, Jamie Preprints, but we are also tapping into third-party preprint servers, for example, MedArchives, BioArchives, SciArchives, Archives, and others. So these we call these Plan P recognized preprint servers. Another player are peer review services. So freestanding peer review services, which peer review preprints. So there are a couple out there and we are starting to make agreements with them to call them Plan P certified peer review services. So one of these peer review services is for example, pre-review um, and together with pre-review, we are also innovating in terms of the form of peer review. In the case of peer review, we are organizing preprint journal clubs, which are kind of webinar-like events where we invite the community to discuss a preprint together with the author. And that webinar is transcribed and it is used in lieu of a traditional peer review report. Other Examples for freestanding peer review services are, for example, peer ref. And um, we're also working with uh, very innovative uh, research assessment services, which are perhaps not traditional peer review services, but they also provide a service in rapidly assessing peer uh, preprints. So one, one of these services is, for example, size score, which is a AI supported uh, tool to assess the quality of a, of a manuscript. And the last player here are the journals for the curation aspect within this PRC model, preprint, review, curate. 
because at the end of the day, we want to offer the re researcher to publish their peer reviewed preprint in a journal. We call those journals Plan P compatible journals. Um, so we are starting with the JMA journals. So all JMA journals are Plan P compatible journals. And in the future, we will invite other journals to participate in this as well. So what Plan P compatible journals are, they, are, they must be open access. Uh, they can be overlay journals. They encourage a preprint first workflow. They identify, we help them to identify suitable preprints through our JMAX infrastructure, which is basically a dashboard, which allows editors of these journals to search preprints and to target preprints, which may be potentially in the uh, in the scope of, of their journal and they have to reduce the article processing fee or the article processing charge by at least one thousand dollars because what they get is basically a already peer-reviewed preprint from the author perspective the workflow is shown here in this slide on the right side. So the left side is the classic submission pathway, how an author typically submits a manuscript to a journal. Um, and that's also how today most authors submit their work to JMA journals. On the right side is the preprint first submission pathway. So in that pathway, authors first publish a preprint, for example, on MetArchive or on JMA preprints. And our JMAX dashboard, or we also call it editor prospecting platform, taps into these preprint servers and identifies potentially suitable manuscripts. And we also send a survey to authors asking them if their preprint was already submitted to a journal, in which, in which case the, the preprint is not eligible to be peer reviewed because we don't want to create redundancies here in terms of, of uh, peer review. But if the author is from a Plan P member institution and the preprint is not submitted to a journal yet, the author can opt in to have their preprint peer reviewed. And there are different peer review pathways. One is a traditional peer review. And um, there are some innovative forms to peer review preprint. And I alluded to, pre, to the pre review peer review pathway. And there is also a pathway where we uh, will experiment with what's known as a crowd review approach and where we uh, target specific communities, which we call hashtag communities. And they're called hashtag communities because we encourage preprint authors to target those communities with hashtags in their preprints. So this preprint then goes through that peer review process if the author opts in at the end um, and, and the uh, peer review process may lead to several revisions of the manuscript. At the end of the day, there will be a final manuscript with a peer review history. And then the author gets the choice um, to put the accept it or put the manuscript in the peer review reports on what we call a manuscript marketplace. So this is a platform which basically matches manuscripts, peer reviewed preprints with journals who might be interested in publishing the peer reviewed manuscript. So these are the plan P compatible journals, the editors 
uh, tap into that marketplace and make publication offers. Uh, as I previously indicated, a requirement is that the APC is reduced by at least a thousand dollars and the author can decide which journal he wants to publish the paper in. Um, the other option is, the default option is that we publish the peer-reviewed manuscript in a Jamie X journal. So that in a nutshell is what Plan P has to offer. If you want to learn more about this, please go to planp.science and there's also a contact form there. We want to hear from you if you are a institution that is potentially interested in becoming a Plan P member, if you're a peer review service um, who wants to uh, get reimbursed for peer reviews, uh, because we are obviously passing on the, the uh, revenue we are getting from institutions, we are passing that on partially to the peer review services. And um, we also want to hear from you if you're a publisher, um, if you are a publisher, we may uh, add your journal to the list of Plan P compatible journals and we can give you access to our prospecting platform and to the manuscript marketplace. Thank you very much.